Welcome to the Australian Business Executive Podcast, where we speak with Australia's most influential industry professionals on the business and economic development issues taking place across the country. You can stay up to date with all our content, including our magazines, podcasts and videos by visiting www.theabe.com.au and clicking on subscribe. Today's guest is Dr. Tim Oldham, MD of ASX listed Adulta Limited. Adulta is using its iBody technology to develop new drugs that act on targets that challenge traditional antibody drugs. Phase one trials of the first product designed to treat a debilitating disease called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis commences in July 2020. Tim, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So, firstly, for our listeners, could you just further explain what Adulta does? as a company? Adulta is what's known as a drug discovery and development company. We use our proprietary iBody technology uh, to discover drugs against biological targets that cause disease. Uh, we then develop those drugs uh, through preclinical development and, and into the early stages of clinical development, usually to about phase one or two, when we aim to partner them with larger pharmaceutical companies to complete development and commercialise. Um, we were founded in 2006, and um, the technology has been developing since then. We listed in 2016 with a great mix of investors supporting us. They are a range from high net worth individuals to institutions such as Platinum Asset Management and our founding venture capitalists such as UI Capital. Okay. And what problem is Adulta looking to solve then? So the pharmaceutical industry is constantly looking for uh, new drugs against what are called biological targets or receptors that are implicated in causing disease. Several of these targets, in fact, hundreds of them, have proven very difficult to drug with traditional pharmaceutical methods. This is either small molecules like aspirin or larger molecules or proteins, often known as monoclonal antibodies or antibody drugs. And our technology is specifically designed to engage the targets that traditional therapies are unable to engage effectively. This means we can more selectively and more specifically hit these targets. So to give you an example, our lead product uh, called AD214 uh, targets a biological receptor called CXCR4. This is a receptor that triggers cells to move around the body. Um, <clears throat> it's implicated in multiple different cell types. Um, one of which is stem cells that ultimately form our blood cells, and another is fibrotic cells or fibrocytes that cause fibrosis, which is scarring of organs. We're interested in the fibrosis side, so we don't want to be mobilising the stem cells. Now, traditional drugs against CXCR4 have been unable to distinguish, and so the only approved molecule uh, for CXCR4 engages not just that receptor, but also some others. So we have what's called off-target effects. And it also is um, not specific in terms of the two different uh, cell types that it engages and mobilizes. Our drug, AD214, is highly specific for CXCR4. So we don't have those off-target effects. And we don't mobilize stem cells. And this means we can be used for chronic treatment of fibrotic diseases, um, such as lung fibrosis. and we don't cause the same side effects that the, the other drug creates and therefore it cannot be used uh, in that chronic setting. So that's a good example of the kind of nuances that, that our technology is designed to solve. Okay. I was going to ask, how is this being done? But um, it sounds like you sort of answered that. Is, is there anything else that we should know about that for uh, more for non-technical investors? Well, it really comes back to the underlying iBody technology and how it's designed. Um, there are many, many companies out there capable of discovering new antibody drugs. Um, our iBodies are what's called a, a subclass of single domain antibodies, and there's only a really small number of companies working on these around the world today. And in our case, they, they were actually discovered from the basic research that led to the foundation of the company uh, around the shark immune system. And it turns out that sharks have this unique feature in their immune system that uh, means that the, their antibodies are much more flexible and much longer in terms of how they bind, their binding regions than human antibodies. And this means they can access these receptors in different ways that leads to the different outcomes that I talked about for CXCR4 earlier. 
And so what our technology is all about is we've managed to create a human version of that by finding a human protein that maps onto the shark system. And that's our eye body advantage is this, this unique way with a unique structure of our antibodies that can hit these receptors in, in ways that are useful and different to the way the traditional antibody approach works. Okay. So uh, what makes it an opportunity for potential investors then? So our iBody platform has the capability to uh, develop and discover drugs to a wide range of different diseases. Um, it's what's called a platform technology. And as I mentioned earlier, there are hundreds of targets um, just in the family that we're particularly interested in uh, that, that haven't yet been drugged or drugged effectively. So we have this platform that's got multi-drug potential, and yet today we've only got one product. Our lead product, AD214, has just been approved to enter clinical trials for the first time. And, and that's a major, major inflection point, the risking point for the company, because it's for the first time that we've demonstrated we can take a drug from discovery all the way into the clinic. It's the first time that someone has externally reviewed our complete data packages on this drug and uh, decided that we have sufficient evidence to support moving it forward into human clinical trials. And those trials importantly validate the entire platform, not just the individual product. So what investors and our shareholders are looking at today is a company that's essentially being valued and looked at as a single product company, but with this enormous multiple uh, product pipeline uh, potential in front of it. And not only that, with the movement into clinical trials, we're now starting to add value to the lead product AD214 as well. And this is being developed for a really nasty disease called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Um, this essentially is scarring of the lungs. And you know, as you're aware from whenever you cut yourself, uh, what happens? You get a scar and that causes tissues to, to pucker and tighten and, and stiffen. So you can imagine what happens when that happens in your lungs and your lungs end up stiffening up and you can't breathe anymore. And patients with IPF have about a four-year survival from diagnosis and there's no good treatments today. Uh, the only two drugs approved slow the progression of the disease, but that's it. So there's an enormous demand for new therapies. Um, big pharma companies are actively looking for products at phase one, uh, which is now where we're up to with this product. Um, and worse, unfortunately, uh, coronavirus infections are going to increase the level of fibrosis because it's one of the side effects uh, of the infection is increased fibrosis in your lungs. Um, so we're dealing with a really important health condition with our lead product, and it's just the starting point for many, many more products to come from our platform. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about the board and management experience responsible for the company? We've blessed with a really diverse and well-experienced um, leadership team. They span the original founding and underlying technology. Our chief scientific officer is an inventor of the original technology, um, Mick Foley, and is an absolute whiz at extracting uh, binders or, or new drugs from our libraries. Um, that's backed up on, on the executive team uh, by a chief operating officer, officer, Dallas Hartman, who's responsible for protein development. Uh, and Dallas is, is deeply experienced in you know, big protein therapeutic companies like CSL. Um, now that we're moving into the clinical phase, we've added clinical strengths to our team. Uh, Claudia Gregorio King has worked in uh, clinical research organizations in the past and has been responsible for uh, project managing numerous clinical trials. Um, and our uh, chief medical advisor, Kevin Lynch, as a former chief medical advisor and or chief medical officer and, and vice president of clinical development at companies like Celgene and Novartis. Then on our board, we have people like Robert Peach, who developed a, an antibody, in fact, a single domain antibody company uh, called Receptos, uh, and was a founder of that and, and eventually sold it uh, for, for a very large exit in the US. That brings both US location as well as the experience of building a company just like ours. Um, we're represented by the founding investors on the board, um, Lydia McCall uh, and her alternate, James Williams, are founding investors with UR Capital. And Paul McClemon is well known in the Australian biotech industry, uh, having led uh, numerous uh, biotech companies and, and really knows his way around the, the Australian uh, biotech landscape very, very well. 
We also have a, a scientific advisory board uh, that's drawn from former Novartis and Pfizer executives. These are some of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. Uh, and our advisory board have led respiratory medicine and uh, uh, antibody development uh, and discovery and development organisations within Novartis and Pfizer uh, all the way through to clinical development uh, over their careers. And they provide us with enormous access to uh, people and expertise that we would struggle to find as quickly on our own. Okay. Um, I mean, you've given us a pretty good over there uh, overview, excuse me, but how is this experience being used to assist with the company's goals? So the biggest challenge when, when I joined the company, um, yeah, and I joined Adalta back in October uh, 2019, uh, coming from a, a career building uh, new businesses in large companies as well as smaller biotechs, and for me, it was how do we realize the opportunity of this platform uh, while keeping our eye on the sort of main game of how do we develop uh, the AD214 product um, and get it into clinical trials and partner that will really help us validate the, the platform as a whole. And that diversity of experience bring us, the, bring us um, uh, an enormous, a much more effective uh, problem-solving uh, expertise to all of the problems you need to grow a, a, a biotech company that burns cash at you know, potentially fearsome rates. Um, we have access to uh, capital markets and, and how to raise capital. Uh, we have expertise that helps us make the critical decisions to ensure that our development programs are, if you like, right first time. We can't eliminate the risks associated with biological variants and you know, our drugs may not work but we can control with the right expertise, which I believe we have, we can control the design of the experiments uh, and the sequencing of experiments to ensure that we are doing the right experiments uh, in the right order um, so that we get, I guess, a fast fail and don't waste shareholders' money by pursuing uh, experiments that aren't going to tell us anything and advance the product, um, but equally that they give us the most efficient uh, information to enable us to partner the drug later on. Okay. Um, so let's talk about how this impacts on your immediate, near-term, and longer-term goals. So we've just achieved the most significant milestone that we've been aiming for, which is to transition AD214 from preclinical to clinical development. And it's wonderful to be able to describe Adalta as a clinical stage company now. This is a major inflection point in any company's existence. So that's been our immediate focus up until now. And of course, now our focus is execute that trial. Um, and there's, some, there's a fair bit of work still to go in doing that. We're, we're actively developing uh, some new imaging agents to help us when we move into the patient cohorts of that trial uh, that'll help us get more information out of the study. So that's our immediate focus is delivery of our AD214 clinical trial. In the near term, we've laid out in March this year uh, a vision for where we want to take the company over the longer term. And so in the near term, there are a number of steps we need to take in order to get ourselves, if you like, expansion ready. Our growth strategy is pretty simple. It's repeat what we've already done over and over. Uh, but in order to do that, we need to be able to scale our processes. Uh, we have some continuous improvement initiatives in our, in our platform that we want to implement. And we have some additional experimental work to start discovering binders to new targets, to select those new targets in the first place, and to do some work to uh, prove the ability to extend the indications of AD214 to other fibrotic diseases beyond lung, which was where we're starting. So in the near term, it's a lot of that preparatory work uh, with the objective in the longer term that by about 2023, we have five products in development in our internal pipeline. Um, but that's only the start of our opportunity with the iBody platform. The other opportunity to develop drugs is to partner with other companies to, to co-develop drugs that, where they bring the target and the biological expertise. Uh, we have one of those in place today with GE Healthcare. Uh, and by 2023, I'd love to have three or four more of those. And that's really the, the focus of business development efforts over the time frame. So today it's all about AD214. Tomorrow it's all about setting the, setting the groundwork for choosing indications and new product type pipeline targets. And in the longer term, it's about expanding the business that we do today, um, multiples over. 
Okay. Uh, what lessons or insights uh, can you share from your own career that you bring to the business? So as I said, I've been working in uh, building new businesses in uh, both large, larger companies, you know, Main Pharma and Hospira uh, in Europe and Asia, uh, and then in smaller biotech companies, um, cell and gene therapy companies, uh, antibody companies for the last 20 odd years. Um, in the challenge that you always have is staging growth. At what point do you invest hard? At what point do you know you have enough to have confidence that you're taking a, a responsible um, risk adjusted or risk managed uh, investment? And you know, the key to doing all of that for me has been always understanding, well, when you're choosing a product and designing a product, what's the end market going to look like? You really have to start with the end in mind. And this is why we're taking such a staged approach to the selection of our next targets. Um, some would argue that we got lucky with the choice of our first target for AD214. Uh, we need to be more thoughtful about that for the next time around because we need to understand in detail you know, what product are we trying to develop, again, so that we can make sure that each of those investments we make along the way is going to be a sensible and smart investment that uh, progresses a product that ultimately is going to have value. Okay. And uh, before we finish today, is there anything else that you'd like to add? I'd just love to close with, with the reflection that, uh, you know, I joined Adulta eight months ago uh, with this, what I thought was an amazing opportunity to take a single product company and turn it into a, a, a multi-product platform. And we're in the process of realizing that the, the approval recently of our first clinical trial is just such a huge inflection point for the company. And it really is the catalyst that uh, I've been aiming for over the past eight months to enable us to unlock the, the amazing growth strategy we have ahead of us. Excellent. Well, Tim, thanks very much for your time today. My pleasure. This has been a production of the Australian Business Executive, a division of Romulus Rising Proprietary Limited, all rights reserved. You can stay up to date with the Australian Business Executive, including our magazines, podcasts and videos by visiting www.theabe.com.au and clicking on subscribe.